encompasses me now to segue into really the, the one mandate that the Lord gave about our gathering is that the house of God would be called a house of prayer, right? It's in Deuteronomy. Jesus reiterated it. That whole, uh, that whole thing of cleansing the temple was, yes, it had to do with the priest uh, uh, charging exorbitant amounts. I understand how that goes. But primary reason was the house of God was not being utilized the way it was supposed to. It, it, it had lost its focus. The reason for the gathering was prayer. And prayer is not only making petitions to God, it's listening to God. Nothing will get us more in tune with the heart of God than prayer. Worship won't do it. Why won't worship do it? I'm just going to do a little teaching here this morning. Why won't worship do it? Because worship is so much linked to our emotion. And I think all of us can recognize that sometimes our emotions are out of whack. Our emotions don't always line up with the Lord. Example, some people today, and I understand it. I have to deal with it too. So some people today are really kind of freaking out with what's going on with the pandemic here in our state. It's extended the mass mandate, all of those things, the tension in our political arena. Man, I've been on the planet for a while now. And maybe I'm just more aware, but it's, it's pretty heightened. It's, 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 a, it's an ugly day we live in, don't you think? And there's a whole lot of people that are getting overwhelmed by that. And so their emotions are worry and fret. And what are we going to do? <clears throat> While the heart of God is, I got this. God's chill. And we're freaking out some. So emotions don't always line up. Sometimes we can get really excited because from what we see, it's like, man, God is answering prayer. Everything's going all right. It's great. But I was reminded of Isaiah, one of his prophecies in like chapter 38, where he was prophesying. Uh, first, he had prophesied the destruction of Jerusalem and all that. And that happened a hundred years after his death. But he then was prophesying in Isaiah, he was prophesying the, the, the restoration and glory days that were coming, a, a revitalization of the nation and, and all of that. The problem was people in that day, Hezekiah and others, were, were thinking it was about them. <laughs> it wasn't about them. It was 100 plus days or years, excuse me, <laughs> later. So our emotions can be, yeah, I see this, this is awesome. And God's going, uh, no. That's why prayer, when we get our hearts lined up with the Lord, we can hear his heart. And sometimes we might feel like shouting and dancing and God say, no, it's a time to weep. Sometimes we feel like all overwhelmed and we feel like crying and throwing our hands up and God's going, it's a time to rejoice. That's why prayer takes precedence over everything else. And so uh, over, the, over the years and time in our midweek uh, prayer times, we've done prompting prayer. Some of you have been with us when we've done that, where we take scripture and we just pray through the scripture powerful times. Other times, especially during the pandemic, have joined us on Zoom. And then when we came in here, uh, where prayer was assigned and different ones were praying. I absolutely love that. I loved hearing your prayers. I loved hearing the prayers of my brothers and sisters as they were preparing their hearts and hearing the heart of God. So many times I heard the heart of God during those prayer times. Recently, it's been what we could call spirit-led, burden-led, whatever was on your heart, you could come up and pray. Well, um, this week we're going to shift it up a little bit and take a little different approach, and we're going to have a theme focus uh, for the first part, and then we'll move into spirit burden. This, this week's theme is going to be healing, restoration, and eradication of COVID-19. COVID-19 has done more than just affect people physically. It's messed with us mentally. It's messed with us emotionally. It's caused uh, unemployment issues. There's so many things that go for that. So we're going to begin uh, the first part of the prayer meeting with healing and restoration and eradication. And I'll be prompting you in that, giving you things to pray about that we can pray together. One mind, one spirit, one body. And then we will open it up as we have before. 
Now, here's the deal. Even if you're not able to come, we get that. But you can join us through Zoom. And you might have a bad internet connection. That's fine. You can join us by phone. And if your phone works where you live, you'd be able to join us. You just wouldn't be able to see us. And that's okay, right? And so I am really kidding the call out for prayer. It's not just our superintendent that's feeling that urgency. Um, I'm just, I guess if anything, I'm trying to say, we need you to pray. We need you to pray. And uh, I think the excuse has got to go. They got to go. And so can, you know, I love you, right? And, and, and some of you are faithful in prayer. Some of you haven't. I'm not looking or thinking about anyone in particular. I'm just saying church, let's rise up and be a church of prayer. Is that all right?